Hi there, I'm Nick Ravellis, the Director of Education and Community Engagement for San Diego Opera, but you can call me Dr. Nick. You're coming to San Diego Opera to see probably the most popular opera ever written, La Boheme. La Boheme is a piece of musical theater, an opera, that was written over 120 years ago, and yet it's just as fresh and exciting as if it were written yesterday. A young Italian composer created it, Giacomo Puccini, who'd already written three other operas. But his career as a composer hadn't really taken flight, and he hadn't yet captured the imagination of the theater audience. It was this opera, La Boheme, that made his name in the opera world and made everybody stand up and take notice of this young genius. What was it about this opera that people loved so much? Well, certainly the music was and is a big attraction, and we'll talk about that a little later. But I think the popularity of this opera has a lot to do with the characters in it. A group of young people who rebelled against their parents' values and ran off to become artists, writers, and musicians. All of this happened in the middle of the 1800s in Paris, France. France, in fact, all of Europe, was experiencing a lot of political and social upheaval in the middle of the 19th century. In fact, 1848 alone was an especially tough year with turmoil and revolution going on everywhere. In the midst of all this, young middle-class people who normally lived quiet, well-off lives with their parents decided that they want to spread their wings, attracted by lives filled with art, passion, and love. This actually became a kind of movement, with these college-age kids crossing Paris's Seine River to go to the so-called left bank of the river, where the rents were cheap, where the university was located, and where the cafe scene was the big attraction. Society called these kids bohemians, similar to calling them gypsies. In French, La Boheme, the Bohemians. One of those kids, a writer named Henri Muget, wrote a book about his experiences describing the lives and loves of his Bohemian friends. The book was a great success, and it was from this book that Puccini took the opera for his story. The story centers on a young writer, a poet named Rodolfo, who lives in a simple attic room with his friend Marcello, a painter. They have two other friends, Chonard, a musician, and Colina, a philosopher, with whom they share money and meals, living a kind of communal existence. Rodolfo falls in love with a young woman who knocks on his door one night because her candle has blown out in the chilly stairway outside his room. She can't see a thing in the darkness, and she asks him to relight the candle. Her name is Mimi, and she lives in the same building, working as a seamstress and dressmaker. Rodolfo notices, though, that her hands are very cold and she looks pale. As it turns out, Mimi is suffering from an illness that viciously attacked many people who lived in the poorer areas of the city or who lived the bohemian lifestyle. Tuberculosis. Tuberculosis, or TB, was an incurable disease in those days and it was almost always fatal. When someone had the disease, People would say he or she had consumption because it was an illness that seemed to consume the body with a chronic cough, fever, night sweats, and weight loss. It's still a dangerous and infectious disease that affects many areas of the world, especially parts of Asia and Africa. But at least today we have treatments for TB. That wasn't the case in 19th century Paris, and that's the conflict we end up seeing in the opera because Rodolfo, is in love with a woman who's ill, and she's just going to get sicker and sicker. How does he deal with this? Will they stay together, or will the illness be too much for them and break them apart? How will Rodolfo's friends deal with bringing someone new into their group, especially someone who's sick? These are all real questions that real people, both then and now, have to deal with. And Puccini deals with this story in a very realistic, very natural way, showing us these bohemians at their best, at their worst, just being human and to the accompaniment of some of the most beautiful music ever written. Let's talk about the music of La Boheme. How does the composer communicate what's going on in the story? How does he use music to tell the story? Well, let's set up the first scene. When the curtain goes up, 
we see a room high up in a loft of an old Paris building. There are a few meager pieces of furniture, maybe a chair here and there, a couch perhaps. There's a wood-burning stove, a couple of beds on either side of the room, a main door coming from the staircase on an outer hallway. There are two people working in the room, working on their art. First of all, Marcello, a painter, who's sitting in front of an easel painting a picture of Moses and the parting of the Red Sea from the Bible. And sitting at a little desk is the poet Rodolfo, scribbling away on a piece of paper and working on his latest play. It's Christmas Eve in Paris, so it's very, very cold outside, maybe even snowing. And these two guys are probably wearing every piece of clothing they own in order to stay warm. Now think about this, and I know we don't have much experience with the cold here in Southern California, in San Diego, but just try it imagination. Uh, you, you and your best friend are trying to get some work done, or you're playing a video game, whatever, and it's freezing cold. Let's say you're in a cabin in Julian where it does snow on occasion, and there's no heat in the cabin. How would you react? Well, how do you react when it's freezing? Well, what do you want to do? Well, I think most people really want to get active physically. You bounce up and down, you're, you rub your arms up and down your shoulders, you rub your hands together, you blow into your hands, anything to get a little warmth through sheer movement and friction, right? Well, that's probably the first thing that Puccini felt that as a composer he had to communicate to the audience. He wanted, he needed to create music that would show or promote the movement of characters in the scene who are trying to warm themselves on the coldest night of the year. Now, what kind of words would you use to describe the kind of music that would express or communicate this, uh, that would communicate the environment? What kind of music accompanies this? Let's start with the tempo. Would it be fast or slow? Yeah, you're probably right. Fast. It would also probably have a shivering quality to it, right, for the cold, and lots of rhythmic vitality to communicate all of the body movement going on in the characters necessary to keep warm. And remember, Puccini has a whole orchestra at his fingertips to create this music and help us in the audience feel what the characters on stage are feeling. So listen to how this opera begins. Well, that's just perfect music to describe the opening scene of this opera. It's exciting, it has that shivering quality, it even almost has the shape of the wind outside that's escaping through the various cracks in the windows of this poor apartment, slicing through the clothes of these two poor friends and making them even colder. The composer Puccini wants us to feel those things too. But what's really cool about this music is that Puccini doesn't just use it once at the beginning of the opera and then forget about it. Because this is the first music we hear in the opera, and because Rodolfo and Marcello were the first characters we see, we associate this music not just with cold and snow, but with them, with these two friends, these bohemians. So at later points in the opera, we hear references to this same music to help underline those connections friendship, togetherness in the cold, that bond that's created when you and your friends are working against some kind of hardship. Here's an example. In Act 3, Mimi and Rodolfo have broken up, and she comes to find him at an inn where he happens to be staying. It's dawn. It's snowing. She's heard a rumor that he's here, but she's not sure. We hear the church bells of the city begin to ring, and Marcello comes out of the inn. As soon as we see him, this is what we hear. But we hear that coldness, bohemian friendship music on top of the music of the church bells. Listen.
What's Puccini doing here? Well, first of all, he's reminding us of who Marcello is, one of the friends, one of the Bohemians. But he's also reminding us that Marcello is a member of this tightly knit group who stand up for each other in adversity, who struggle against the cold, who struggle against hardship together. And that Mimi has actually become one of them. I hear a moment in this little section that says, Mimi, we accept you, we love you, we're going to be there for you. Now, maybe that's just my imagination. Maybe I'm right, maybe I'm wrong. But you know what? It doesn't matter. That choice of music and that moment in the story could mean a number of different things. And maybe, just maybe, Puccini wanted you to decide what it means for yourselves. Puccini's opera La Boheme is the most popular opera ever written. I'm so glad that you're going to have the opportunity to see it, especially if it's your very first opera. You're in for a real treat. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you at the opera.